All right, welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. Uh, it's the 4th of December. Thanks for joining us. So here's what I've got as agenda topics. Uh, open action items. And simplified labeling of Docker images proposed by Jim Crowley. Uh, then uh, Windows Docker images for LTSC 2019, Gareth. Docker image support idea, official versus unofficial, Alex. A proposal for me to add Gareth as an image maintainer on the Docker repository and setting a goal to set get the, brand, the master branch working on ci.jenkins.io. Any other topics you'd like to add? Okay, then let's go through action items. So yes, I still have the action item. Yes, I think it's shaping now. Uh, started the process this morning. Um, last, last, um, Evaluation, checked various images for problems, and we have plenty of them, but plenty of examples to use to highlight. Plenty of examples to use as test cases in the, in the JEP, like Dr. or Debian 9, not end of life, Open J9, 9 needs a maintainer, etc. So I'll include those in that JEP and I hope to get it done quickly. I'll send everyone, a, what I'll do is send everyone a draft privately, likely, so that we, or would you, Alex, maybe you and Gareth can, can give me insight. Should I submit it as a pull request in draft to the, to the JEP repository and we just do it in the, in the Jeff repository, or there is your worry that, hey, this is going to be so controversial that we should review it as a group first. Repository. And then, like, very few people like monitor that um, repository, I think. So, until you send out the Jeff on like the dev mailing list or something like that, I don't think it's going to have a lot of, um, like, a lot of people are going to have an issue with it. Okay, so you're okay with it being a, a draft PR, and we admit it's draft. It it will, it may need radical changes because I may propose something that is so controversial that we say that's not acceptable. We've got to throw that idea out. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Next one was CentOS option for adopt Open JDK. Alex, anything you want to share there? Yeah, so I, I have a, I should have a PR soon that um, uses the uh, YAM repository um, from Adopt, Adoptium. Um, so I'll, I'll create the PR and then we can have discussion on that PR just to see if people really care or not. <laughs> so, and that was a question I had there. I'm not, I'm not confident that I detect signs of life on CentOS operating system, Docker images, do we have active maintainers there that you feel like people, other people are interested in it? Well, I know that there is recently some discussion that the CentOS um, images are the most secure. They have the, they have zero CVEs when scanned in terms of the image. Um, so I don't know if that's going to cause more people to start using them or not. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, it's, it's possible that that, that more people might use them since they have um, uh, you know, less security vulnerability, supposedly. Okay. All right. So I, I just haven't seen indications of an, a maintainer, a you or a me who right. cares about and, and watches over them, but that's good to know. All right. Okay. Just, just so discuss within the, in the context of the PR. Great. Excellent. Anything else on adopt then? No, not right now. I think that's all. Okay. I had a, a, a flag on a prepare a blog post 
I think I'm just going to drop this. The, the window of opportunity for me has passed. Or, or is your feeling that we should do this and use it as the way chance to announce the deprecation of, of install-plugins.sh? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, the other thing we could do is create a shim it like replace the contents of install plugins.sh and shim it to the plugin installation manager and then people will be using plugin installation manager just without knowing it That's um, there there are some um, differences between arguments between install plugins.sh and the plugin the cli tool but i think it could be used as a there could be a shim implemented instead of doing any sort of upkeep on that script um, and just replace it with a shim. I, just just a one option. Um, I like that. I think that's very attractive. Instead of removing it, we 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 leave it, but it becomes a simple call to a call directly to the plugin installation manager. Bring people into the new world, into the the new tool without requiring that they change their scripts. Yeah, so that, that's just one option. I don't know if it's, uh, we have a separate script right now the, um, that is used as a wrapper around the tool. It just uh, it just passes the options directly though. So it's it's slightly different. So this would be, I don't, and I, I don't know if we wanna put the effort into doing anything with install plugins.sh instead of just saying, hey, move over. So. Those are just some options. I think if we do decide to completely remove install plugins.sh at some point, I think, I don't know if it necessitates a full blog post, maybe a post on the mailing list, the developer's mailing list or the user's mailing list. Um, I don't know if it needs a blog post. Okay. All right, good. So that one, I'm gonna leave it sitting there and we may not need a blog post. Is it Using a shim, would that introduce, is that likely to introduce any um, differences? Could 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 sort of downstream users of that? There uh, are some. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There, there are some differences gone. in behavior between the the CLI tool and the script, um, but I think that some effort has been put in to uh, reduce that. So we'd have to see if it was, and that's why I was saying, do we really want to put the effort in there to? have some sort of translation layer, implement a translation layer and test it and stuff like that. So that, that's kind of the trade-off I would think. Yeah, and, and it isn't the trade for me there seems like we're choosing, if we, if we delete it entirely, there will be some portion of the users who the first they see of it is when they attempt to do a Docker build and it falls over dead. Whereas if we do a, a, a replacement with, with known incompatibilities, they won't realize that they won't necessarily even detect that the change unless they were using one of the incompatible setups. Okay, great. All right, so that's a, that's a decide if a contributor wants to, it is welcome to work on that and decide then, right? You, me, whoever, if if you feel like it'd be valuable to do a shim, that's a good idea, yeah. Okay, anything else on that plugin installation manager and install plugins.sh topic? No, okay, great. So we had one topic on Jim submitting refinements for parallelization. Alex, I'm not aware. I haven't been following his his work there. Anything you want to report there, or Gareth, anything you've got? I started looking at the PR. I, I need to. Um, the the it looks pretty good. I'll say that the the only question I have is how it fits in with the Jenkins file because that's kind of important how we actually invoke it. So I, I need that's kind of the part that Jim says he doesn't have a lot of experience with, and so. Um, 
so I need, that's kind of what he wanted me to look at. So I, I, that's kind of what I'm going to be looking at to see, you know, is it easy, is it going to be easy to call from the Jenkins file in a parallel way and, and stuff like that. So that I, I have started looking at it. I just haven't had a ton of time to dig deep into it. All right, super. It, that's because there's the other PR to introduce the declarative pipeline as well. Yeah, the, I, I was concerned about the declarative just because we are introducing more of this parallel stuff that may need to be um, scripted, um, but we can definitely look at that too. There, there is the capability of doing parallel in declarative, so we, we just have to figure out if, if it's going to work with what we need to do. Well, and, and the parallelism in gyms for multi-arch must be a multi-platform parallel, right? It's got to do parallel ARM64, parallel Z-series mainframe, parallel power PC, and parallel AMD64 or Intel. Right. Okay. And I, I have a PR that um, that adds those in the the multi arc stuff, um, but it would need to be reworked once Jim stuff is integrated. Okay, got it. And we need to have a stable PowerPC agent. <laughs> oh, is it? It's it's not it's not been uh, holding stable. Well, I haven't no, I haven't looked to see if it's back up. It is definitely online now on CI. Oh, okay. Jenkins that I own. Okay. And it's it's been been running quite well okay Did, does it still have issues when we when there's like a kernel upgrade i uh, don't know <laughs> that's a good question i don't know that i've ever, i've done a kernel upgrade since then okay that's, that, that's question. That, that was what i was wondering is is does the kernel upgrade somehow cause problems every time so that was that was just uh that was what good i meant question. by stability right and, and that one i i don't know that i've done an operating system upgrade on it recently so it's a good question. All right, simplified labeling of Docker images. I propose we put that one at the bottom. Uh, since Jim's not here, we'll let him talk to it when he gets here, if he's here. And if he doesn't make it, we'll leave it off the topics. Next topic was Docker images for LPSC 2019. Gareth, you wanna give us a, an overview there? So I mean, uh, no update really on that. Um, we were holding off merging the PR until after the LTS had gone out, um, which, so I believe um, we can merge that one now, um, which should give us the yeah, Windows of Core LTSC 2019 Jenkins image. Um, That's awesome. I just rebased that with the latest um, plugin manager update this morning. So, so that sh it should be consistent. I think it's 220, it's using across all of the images now. Um, okay, and and I saw that Oleg has, or that it has 2.3.0 has released, but we would do that consistently among all brand, all, all platforms. Right now, 2.2.0 is the, the one we're delivering at the moment. Yes. Okay, great. Alex, any objections from you on, on that as a reasonable plan? And we look at the PR, I'm sure, and finalize it, ready to go. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll merge it because I'm, I'm happy with it. One thing, one thing it, it, it passes first thing in the morning for me. And then if I run it in the afternoon, we get quite a lot of failures on that built. Um, and we think that is down to Docker Hub rate limiting. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Oh, because it, it can't pull or pull images. Yeah, it, it doesn't give you a um, a rate limiting error. But we think that we're doing the Docker login too late in the process. Mm. Um, the so the it should be any Docker command though should be using the Docker config environment variable which should have the credentials. That was my understanding when I read through the information. You shouldn't have to explicitly Docker login if you have the Docker config set up because it should use those credentials automatically. But maybe we need to look at that uh, in more in depth. 
because that's how we do it on ci.jenkins.io is we, we have a with Docker credentials or with credentials and it provides a zip file that has the, um, the Docker config uh, information, the JSON file um, that has a username and password and so forth or, or API token or whatever is needed. So my understanding of the Docker config environment variable is it should um, do any sort of authentic authentication needed. So it may just be that we, our plan is not, uh, we're not on the sponsored plan yet. Well, but Olivier said that we definitely were. Oh, did it? He, I thought he had said that we may need to change the creds. Oh, oh, I had missed that. But maybe, maybe I, I can go back and look at the mailing list, but I thought that was what he had said. Interesting. Okay, so that that's certainly a, a, a yeah, an interesting topic that I wasn't aware of. Okay, so Alex believes the doctor commands should already be should be already using the creds that we have because we've got them. But but Gareth, you're you're absolutely seeing failures, and and when we merge this PR, we may likely see another failure on. Well, we'll, we'll we will see a failure on the master branch anyway because yeah. that's that hasn't been working for a while. Um, but so this morning when I rebased the PR, uh, it it went through all the builds passed. Um, so I, I, I seem to get more success. I, ha I, haven't, I haven't put this data into a spreadsheet or anything, but anecdotally, I feel like I get more uh, success in the morning, my time, rather than in the afternoon. Um, so I'm, yeah, European time zone. So I, I w wondered whether that was because changes come through a bit faster in the afternoon and, yeah, we start hitting a rate limit or something like that. So and what sorts of steps should we be taking there then? So there's this, this Docker login PR, Gareth, that you closed now. Um, is there something we should do instead? Or Alex, do you have a recommendation of what we should do instead? How should we approach this? Well, the, the, the failures are happening during the build, right? Not, not during yes. the... So, so that wouldn't be the Docker login stuff, I don't think, um, because that the, the Docker build... There's, there's never a call to um, Docker login. The make files don't call that ever, right? They just call Docker build dash T whatever. So if it's failing during that time, then it's not, it has nothing to do with a Docker login call. Well, except that I thought that Docker build would do a pull if it didn't have a portion of the image and that that, that pull could be rate limited or, or blocked. Right, but what I'm saying is the, the Docker login PR that Gareth had does not affect that, right? Because oh, that, 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 was, that was part of the publishing to um, like the experimental. Um, okay. That wasn't part of the build process. I so what, what we need to do is we need to determine and see if there's a way we can figure out if we're being rate limited via the Docker API or something similar and put some debug statements in to figure out if that's what we're actually hitting. Um, if that's what we're actually hitting, then we can determine how we can solve that problem. But we need to figure out why, if we are actually getting rate limited, or if it's something where maybe the Docker cleanup is not being um, run successfully all the time. And so our, the, the images are, or the disks are getting filled up. So we, we need to figure out why it's, it's failing at that point. Um, I think Gareth's uh, information about it being related to rate limiting would be great to investigate and to kind of zero in on that and and determine if that's the actual issue we're running into. Yeah, what, one of one of Jim's PRs had uh, um, he'd moved some of the some of these sort of Docker login commands into like a common functions area. Um, so it may be worth um, pulling some of that into a, a smaller PR um, so that we can start to you know use the same bits with some debugging in um, throughout the scripts. I know we went through kind of an effort. Previously, when Publish Experimental was failing with trying to add Docker logins and things like that, and it actually caused problems because we had the Docker config, um, mm. because it overwrote the Docker config JSON file. Um, which, which, which would make sense, yeah. 
So, okay. so, so that's kind of the reason that we haven't had the Docker login in process because the understanding was is that Docker config should take care of that. So, we, but I think the rate limiting stuff is would be good to to look at and and make sure we have the right credentials um, that are being used so that it's the, a non rate limited um, the sponsored plan or whatever for, that Olivier w would know. Uh, that's something I can invest. I can investigate how if we can pull that. Um, certainly, look where we are with the rate limiting backup. Um, into some and you, stuff. you should be a trusted um, account now on that repository, so you should be able to like make changes to the Jenkins file and a PR for debug purposes and stuff like that. So, you, yes. You oh, also, yeah. Gareth is a maintainer now. On the not on the Docker Hub side, but he is on the. He's been added to the. Um, the GitHub um, Docker packaging, I think it's Docker packaging group. Yeah, I can't merge, but I, I don't have merge rights, but I, um, I, I have noticed that if I change the Jenkins file, I think I'm down as a contributor or something. Oh, oh okay. So, right, so, so I can change the Jenkins file and it does pick up my builds, but I don't have merge rights. Got it, okay. so. So, so Jenkins file changes are processed. That's weird. You should be. I'll look into that because, Mark, you're able to merge, aren't you? On, I am. Yes, the... I I definitely am. Yeah. Let me double check just to. Gareth, be sure. you're in the same group as Mark on the Team Docker packaging. Okay. So I'll, we'll have to look into that more because that's. Um, yeah, we, we should figure that out. So here's here's what I definitely have merge permission, right? I've got I've got the oops. Let's pick one that's not got conflicts. Uh, how <laughs> about this one? If I were going to merge this, I solemnly promise I will not merge it. But let's look see. <laughs> it also has conflicts. Okay. So but you would uh, the Java Ops one, uh, ten twenty five. Oh oh yeah, that's a good one, right? Okay. I think I don't think that one has any conflicts. And there, yes. So I definitely have merge permission. Okay, but but Gareth, you ah. confirm you do not have merge permission. I do now. Oh, okay. oh good. Okay, okay, good. All right. Question answered. Excellent. I'm pretty certain I didn't this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so that so that's true of the the GitHub side, Mark. He he does have permissions there. The Docker Hub side would be something we would need to. Um, uh, to look at more if he needs permissions there. And I, I haven't had a sense, Gareth, that, that you need that side as much, right? The work thus far has been in the Jenkins CI slash Docker GitHub repository, hasn't it? Yeah, I, so what would be the circumstances where I would need a permission? Would that just be when adding a new repository or something? Adding like a new repository, um, deleting tags, um, Stuff like that. Are you? Do you have access on the Jenkins for eval? I noticed there's some of the Open JDK images published there. Are, are you publishing those, or is? Uh, it, it's one of the one of the build scripts is publishing oh, okay. those, uh, and uh, Olivier uh, created the okay. repositories for me. Yeah. So. Uh, so go to um, repositories, Mark. Repositories. Okay. Oh, sorry. Up at the top. Oh, up here, got yeah. it. Yeah, and then there should be a drop down that you can change to the Jenkins. Jenkins or Jenkins oh. for eval? It depends. Which one would he want? Would you need access to to these? Well, I'm uh, not sure that Gareth. Do you need access to either of these on the Docker Hub side? Probably not. Initially. Um, Maybe it's something that I'll request if it comes to a point that I require access. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy not to have access. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> right. uh, you have you have full support to to that that comment. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So so we've got Gareth the permission to merge. That's good. Okay. Anything else we need to discuss then on the Windows Docker images and the Docker login topic? Help me out here. So it's still 
Gareth, we'll, you'll do some investigation, see if we can figure out why the failures are occurring on the on PRs and places. We know that it's failing on master, but this is a, a different class of failure, not the failure that's causing the master branch to break. Yep. Okay, so here, investigate. Okay, good. All right. Next topic, Docker image support idea, official versus unofficial. Alex. Yeah, so I, um, Daniel Beck is very concerned about the number of images that we publish as an official um, list um, because it takes a significant amount of time when doing security releases and so forth that he has to wait until those images are ready um, before we before he can proceed with his process. <clears throat> so what I wanted to, under, uh, to propose is that we adopt a similar um, method as to what the like Adoptium um, project does where they have an official set of images and an unofficial set of images. And the proposal would be that we determine which set of images we want to be official. And those would be the only ones that, that Danny would have to worry about um, in terms of waiting for security release. Um, and then the unofficial ones, we could add as many images as we want to the unofficial list, but that would be a possibly separate build process for those unofficial ones, such that Daniel didn't need to wait for that. Um, right now we have quite a number of um, images. We have CentOS, we have um, Debian, we have some Ubuntu, we have OpenJ9 versus Hotspot. Uh, we have uh, multiple Windows variants, uh, although we're, we actually reduced that number. Um, JDK 8 versus JDK 11. So, um, you know, the, and that can only grow, right? As we, if people want specific other things like Alpine or this or that, right? Then it just it causes that build to increase in time. So this proposal would be maybe part of your JEP mark where we um, have two tiers of, of support. One is the official list. And those are the ones that, um, that, that have all the security fixes and stuff like that. The other ones maybe have a, a later update for security issues and things like that. Um, and, you know, the official ones maybe we reduce to just JDK 11 or something like that, right? Because it is a controller image rather than like an agent or, or anything like that, um, reducing that to maybe JDK 11 and then one Linux variant and one Windows variant um, or something similar. Um, but just reducing that set for the official list versus unofficial. And unofficial, we could have Amazon Linux and five different JDKs and all that stuff, but that's not going to impact the, um, the security process for Daniel. Would you see them going into different Docker orgs? That, that would be a question. We'd, Adoptium does that. Um, you, they have the... Um, the adopt open JDK right now, anyway, that's the official one that has a specific set of tags that are quote unquote official. And then they have sub repositories under that for like open JDK eight and open JDK 11 and other open JDKs and stuff like that, where they have lots of different tags available there. Um, so that is, that might be the best way to go is to have a Jenkins official or, or something like that, where those official images are published and, um, you know, that's the, the, the stuff that the security fixes will always be in. The other stuff will have a delayed um, set of things. And we'd have to definitely pull in Daniel on this because if there are releases of Jenkins Docker images that don't have security fixes, is that going to be a problem or not? Um, but, but this is just kind of get the ball rolling on what we can, what we can possibly do. He, he did have some initial interest in that when I um, put it on IRC but we'd have to pull him in and make sure it was um, something that he, he'd be okay with in the process. Well, and I think that's a very healthy thing to include in the JEP because, because we've, we've got, we've got a, a, a big challenge there right now. It feels like we've got far more Docker images than we have maintainers to support the images. And so I think as in good conscience, I feel like we need to reduce the number of officially supported images just because we don't have enough bodies of us to, to maintain them adequately. And, and if, if people want, want to maintain an image, they should become a maintainer. They should yeah. volunteer and come help us. Yeah, I agree. I, I need to drop off onto another oh, call. Thank you. 
Super. I'll, Thanks, st I'll start that. I'll start that one, Mark. So. Great. Thank you. Cheers. All right. So, Alex, anything else with regard to the the idea on image support? Did I capture your ideas in the notes here adequately? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Good. So, and I think I think this is a a good thing to feed into the our review of a JEP and discussions about, okay, how should this thing work and why, uh, how do we get there? It's, it, it's certainly going to be an interesting challenge as imagine I, I, my argument says we should drop CentOS because we should shift CentOS to unofficial because mm. it doesn't have an active maintainer. And I would expect an outcry from the community saying, but that's my preferred image and, and they'd be right. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. I don't know the other the other problem we have too is I don't think there's a way to for us to really understand which images are how often images are being pulled, meaning oh, oh. or is there? Well, I I I think maybe image pulls not. I'm I'm not aware of of any no data on which tags are the hottest tags, right? Right. Yeah. But I think there is data. And I don't think it's publicly visible, but Gareth has been granted access to the, the stats data that Andrew Bayer maintains. Okay. And inside that stats data, I think there may be things which will hint to us, not, not Docker specific, but just in general, hey, here are these operating system platforms and it really knows operating system. Okay. okay so requesting stats data to confirm which uh, configurations are most interesting. Sorry, do you need to drop off? Alex? No, I don't. I, I, I'm good until whenever the meeting is done. I just had a Super. text come in. So, okay. All right. Okay. I think the image support topic is settled. My topic on New Docker image maintainer. I think we you we already proved we got that. Gareth's got access. The next one was that the Jenkins, the master branch has been broken for a number of months. Help me out, Alex. I don't remember what the break is right now. Is it is it, it something that is it's just viable the to fix? It's just the published experimental, and I think that Jim's PR is supposed to help with that. So we merged in a previous PR from Jim to do some parallelization stuff. And um, there was not a Jenkins file update associated with it. And so the wrong thing is being called right now in the, the, the Jenkins file. I, I can look at that. Uh, it, you can assign an action item to me to look at that. Um, and I'll, I'll try and figure it out. Okay, are you sure? I, I mean, I don't want to pile things on you in this exercise. For me, that that feels like we can we can ask others to help out with that if if that would if that would be okay for you. Sure. Yeah. If if someone else is available, I'm 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 happy to let them uh, take a look at it. I'm also okay. happy to help. So I, either way, I'm good. All right. Great. So for Alex or Gareth or Mark, investigate. and submit the PR to fix the master branch. And we may need to involve Jim just to, if there's any question about what we actually need to be calling. Right, okay. And now if if we turned off publish experimental, would that be an acceptable condition there? Not really, right? Because we're, I mean, but this is not publishing yeah, I mean, we, we could disable it for now and then just have a PR that has it enabled that um, that we do the debug in. Uh, that would make it pass. You're, you're not going to have images actually published to Jenkins for eval, but they're not being published right now anyway. So it's kind of a six dozen one, half dozen of the other. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Right, okay. If, if we want the, the good feelings of it being green, or blue, whichever it is on ci.jenkins.io. Right. Um, then, you know, just disabling it for now is fine. I don't know how many people are actually using those images. Um, 
and at some point we would want to make it so that the multi-arc images are not um, experimental anyway. Right, so, and that's that's a, that's a different. In right. order to make the multi-arch um, images non-experimental, that means trusted will need to also have access to the to the to the multiple right. platforms, right? And yeah. right now, I'm pretty sure it does not. So, right. so that that would be an extra step for later. Okay. All right. Uh, last topic I had then was on simplified labeling of Docker images. Uh, Jim's not here. Are there other, is there anything you wanted to share there on that, Alex? Um, no, I'm, 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 that's kind of the part of the PR too um, that we talked about earlier. So it's just something I need to review. Okay, all right. And I think I understood from the mailing list that, or from a, a comment that Jim's proposal is reasonably well aligned with the labeling you're already using on Windows for the, the Jenkins free eval Windows images? That's correct, yeah. Okay. I, I did have one other topic. Oh, go ahead. Um, we, we should probably do a bug scrub on the various Docker um, repositories. Like there are 96 issues on Jenkins CI Docker. Um, some of them are from like 2017. Um, that's the oldest. So some of them are related directly to install plugins.sh. So we can, I think, close those as um, that script is deprecated. Um, use plugin manager. So uh, we just need to do a bug scrub of, of all the Docker repos, I think. Okay. And maybe that's worth another note of pull request scrub. Mm -hmm. On the on the Docker repositories as well, because there are a number of, of those which are older and and may no longer be viable. Good. Correct. And that's not a top priority. It's just kind of something we should probably look at. Right. Yeah. Should, well, and one of the things that's helped me in the past is should we show some graphs once mm -hmm. a month. from the uh, Linux Foundation's uh, tracking system. Mm. They've got a, a system that watches our repositories for us. We use it in the doc SIG and it, it, it produces some interesting data to show, hey, how are we doing or not doing? To investigate, bring it to the next. That's a good idea. Just, just it, it, it doesn't give much hope because truthfully in the doc sig most of the time it's oh gee shame on me that's not we're not removing things as often as we should but at least it tells us the truth right all right oh pressed f10 when i shouldn't have just what we <laughs> need is a javascript debugger okay anything else no, that's that's all for me. All right. Thank you very much, Alex. Recording will be posted separately. Recording is now off.